Mr. and Mrs. Lord, starring Alice Frost and Joseph Kirk. To most New Yorkers, ice is a frozen liquid usually found in the form of cubes. However, there are still some people who enjoy skating on it. And when Pam and Jerry are in the mood for some winter exercise, they drop in at a neighborhood ice palace and indulge in this magnificent outdoor sport indoors. Look out now, Jerry. Give me some room. Darling, are you still trying to make a figure eight? Oh, no, dear. I'm not up to eight yet. I've just reached four. No wonder you keep falling down. A four is impossible. Well, I don't see why it should be. Just make a straight line like this. And then you cross the other foot over, and it... Just put the... Oh. Huh. Maybe I should have made two twos instead. Oh. oh, well. Everybody takes the fall once in a while. Not that girl over there. She really knows how to figure skate. Well, I wish you'd stop looking at her figure. Huh? Besides, she's a professional. You mean she gives lessons? Now, Jerry, if you're thinking of taking lessons from that... Well, girl, I really ought to brush up on my skating, Pam. I'm getting off... Hey, watch it. She's coming this way. Well, I wish she wouldn't try those stunts around us. The first thing oh, you know... Is... Oh, my God! Oh, See? She fell down. Well, that was a bad spill, Pam. She's all shaken up. Jerry, where are you going? Well, don't get excited, dear. I just want to see if she's all right. Uh, can I help you, miss? Oh, thank you. I'm not sure I can get up. Oh, what happened? Are you hurt? All right, there we are. No... Oh, no, I don't think so. It's just my ankle. It seemed to go out from under me. It wasn't your ankle, Miss. It was your skate. Look, you've broken the blade. Well, it's a good thing I wasn't trying a jumper. I might have had a nasty... That's funny. What? The blade of my skate, it... It doesn't seem to be broken. It... It looks as if it's been filed. Say, you're right. It has been filed. Why do you suppose anybody would do a thing like that? Unless somebody wanted you to have an accident. Somebody did. What do you mean? This isn't the first time something like this has happened. I've, I've had these so-called accidents ever since I came to work here. Accidents? Yes. Almost every night something new happens. First it was the short circuit in my dressing room. And then the loose board on the back stairs. And a gas stove that was left on the equipment room without any flame. And Saturday, a chandelier fell. Well, you ought to complain to the management. What good would that do? The manager's the one who's responsible for all this. Well, if I were you, I'd go to the police and have the manager arrested. Oh, no. I couldn't do that. Why not? Because the manager is my father. Really, Mrs. North, I, I don't know how you're going to speak to my father in front of me. It's going to be awfully embarrassing. Well, you don't have to go in with us, Miss Russo. We'll go in his office alone. Oh, all right. I'll wait for you in my dressing room. Good. We'll be there in a few minutes. Mr. Russo. Yes? Who is there, please? Uh, Mr. and Mrs. North. Uh, may we come in? All right. Come in. Thank you. Now, what it is? Marcella have sent you here? Who? Marcella. My stepdaughter. Oh, she's your stepdaughter. So what difference does that make? Daughter and stepdaughter is my step, not yours. So what do you want of me? Well, for Pete's sake, what are you so jumpy about, Mr. Russo? If you have daughter like Marcella, you be jumpy too. That girl have changed completely overnight. In what way? In every way. Since she come here to work for me, she like Mr. Hyde and Dr. Jack Kent. Every night she tried to kill me. Huh? First with loose board and stairs, then with chandelier. She tried to gas fix it. With a stove? Oh, she tell you about that. She told us you were trying to kill her, Mr. Russo. Oh, I can kill her. My son killed me first. Uh, just a minute, Mr. Russo. Maybe somebody's trying to kill both of you. What for the reason is? They have never done somebody wrong. Just the same, Mr. Distinct. What's the matter, Jerry? Somebody's listening at the door. I'm going to see what it is. As I said, Mr. Russo, there's a distinct possibility that someone's out to kill you both, and that someone may... Oh, well, Marcella, come right in. You can hear much better inside. Oh, I... I wasn't really listening, Mr. North. I... I just wondered if you were still talking. Well, come in anyway. Mrs. North and I were just leaving. Leaving? 
Where are we going? To? We're going down the hall to a public phone, dear. I'd like to speak to Bill Wigand about this. Wigand? Who is? Oh, uh, just a friend of ours, Mr. Russo. Uh, we'll be back in a little while. Come along, Jerry. After you, darling. Hey, down the door! Ah! What was that? Light aimed straight at your head. I saw the ray flash just before it hit this door. Oh, my goodness. It just, it just missed me by an inch. Are you all right, Mrs. North? Well, I, I, I guess so. Only this gives the case an entirely different complexion. How do you mean? Well, the murderer isn't trying to kill you or your daughter, Mr. Russo. He's trying to kill me. <laughs> Yes, Bill, I'm calling from a public phone booth at the rink. And you better not waste any time getting down here. Pam was almost killed. Uh, wait a second, Bill. Pam's rapping on the window. What is it, dear? Wait, Jerry. Tell Bill to come right over and hang up. What? Somebody just sneaked into Marcella's dressing room. We've got to see who it is. Well, Bill, I'll see you when you get here. I've got to run now. So long. Hurry, darling. It might be the man who threw that knife at me. And I certainly don't want to hurry. Which way is Marcella's dressing room? Down here. There's door on the right. Oh, it's open. Take it easy with that. Oh, 
Is he dead? No. Somebody struck him on the head. He's unconscious. Oh, that's a mean bruise. Oh, the lights. The lights. What's he's come oh. to? The other lights. They keep going on and up in my head. Easy now, Mr. Russo. Oh. Who hit you? The floor. I will sit back in chair. And you know what? I am fine. No back. She fell right through. And your head hit the floor. How could it miss? The floor is all over the ground. Oh, uh-huh. looks like another one of those accidents. This chair has been tampered with. Oh, I wish we knew who was doing all this. If we don't find out pretty soon, one of us is going to be killed. One of us has been killed already. So what you say? In the hall, Miss Russo. There's a man lying on the floor with a knife in his chest. And the murderer is still on the loose. What murderer? <gasps> Oh, Bill, you frightened me. Oh, I'm sorry, Pam. I didn't realize a murder had been committed between now and the time you called. Where's the body? Down the hall, Bill. He was killed right in front of Marcella's dressing room. Oh, what's his name? Gallagher. Roy Gallagher. The millionaire gold miner? That's right. You know him? No, but it seems to me I've read something about his daughter. Here, Bill. The body's right over here. Only... Only what? The man who told us who he was is gone. That isn't all that's gone, Jerry. What do you mean? The locket that was in Mr. Gallagher's hand. That's gone, too. Marcella, what's happened? Nothing. I just wish you hadn't come here. Why not? Marcella, 
Do you not tell me who he is? Oh, good evening, Mr. Rousseau. Hey, Mr. North. You fit pretty late time to call on somebody, no? Uh, well, we had a late idea, Mr. Rousseau. Maybe come in. Do no good to come in, huh? Marcel and me have to go out. At this time of night, where are you going? Uh, Marcel uh, have new job in Ice Shore at West, and we make plan to go there. Well, uh, before you go, you better tell us how well you knew Mr. Gallagher. What you talk about? I never hear of him. Then what's your picture doing in the scrapbook? What picture? The one of you in a beard. It was taken in Alaska. Now I know you crazy. I never have beard, and I never be in Alaska. Now look, Mr. Russo, if you'd rather we call the police and have them ask you these uh, questions. No, 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 please. Uh, do not call the police. Uh, just go away from here and leave us alone. We'll be killed if you don't. Killed? Uh, not so loud. Please. He may be watching. He may hear us. Oh. Mr. Chadwick. The theatrical agent? Yes. He just left here a few minutes ago and he, he threatened to kill us if we talked to anyone about the murder. It was two hours to get out of town. Let me get my cellar job in California to make sure we leave tonight. Well, you better not leave. Chadwick's probably trying to frame you. No, please. Go away. Let us get ready. We're supposed to meet him in his office in 20 minutes. 20 minutes, huh? Quick, get on the telephone and call Lieutenant Wigand. Tell him to come right up here. Wait a minute. Where are you be going? We're going to keep your appointment with Mr. Chadwick. I don't understand it, Jerry. Hmm? The door was open and all the lights are on, but nobody's in the office. Well, maybe Mr. Chadwick stepped out for a minute. Either that or he's setting a trap for how could he know we're here? He's expecting the Russo. Well, I don't like it. No matter which way it is. Don't be silly, dear. This is a good chance for us to have a look around. Jerry, what are you doing? Looking around. Uh, go through those files, Pam. If Miss Gallagher was an actress, he may have some sort of record of... What is it? Did you find something? I'll say I found something. The locket that was stolen from Mr. Gallagher's hand. The Catholic is the one who took it. I wonder why. We'll find the answer to that one. When what, Mr. North? Oh, Jerry, it's Mr. Chadwick. Mr. Chadwick in a loaded gun, Mrs. North. What are you two doing here? Why, oh, we were waiting for you, Mr. Chadwick. Yes. Uh, well, we uh, knew you were a theatrical agent, and uh, uh, we came to see you about a job. Uh, we do an act in Vaudeville. Oh, really? And what is the nature of your act? The nature? Oh, uh, we're acrobats. Is that so? Well, suppose you do a few back somersaults for me. Here? In, in this little tiny office? Well, why not? Move the desk back. There's plenty of room. Oh, but uh, we, we don't do that sort of thing. No? Well, what sort of acrobatics do you do? Well, uh, we have a high wire act. I balance a chair on one leg, and she sits on my head and uh, spins plates. Oh, I'm just a cheesecake, Mr. Chapman. <laughs> And you expect me to believe all this, of course. Oh, of course. Then what are you two doing with that locket in your hand? Why did you open my drawer and fish it out, eh? Well, I... Uh... Don't bother to explain, Mr. North. I have an act, too, you know. A sharpshooting act. And it goes like this. Hey, what are you doing? Giving this office the proper look. You see, I'm afraid you know too much. I've got to make it look like you were ransacking this place when I shot you. Shot? Did you say shot? I did, Mrs. North. The law allows a man to protect his property against marauders. And in the darkness, I couldn't see who you were. Oh, what darkness? Well, don't worry about it, Mrs. North. When I turn off the lights, you'll both be dead. <laughs> You wouldn't dare go through with it. Wouldn't I? I have a great deal at stake, Mrs. North. But you don't seem to understand. Be quiet. There's no need to prolong this agony. The sooner we... Arthur! What are you doing? Oh, you fool, you. Why did you come here? Miss Gallagher. So you're the connection we've been looking for. I told you to be quiet. I'll keep your mouth shut. For heaven's sakes, Arthur, put that gun down. Don't you know these people are working with the police? I know very well what they're doing. They found the locket that I stole from your father's hand. Your locket, Faye. What? You were in such a hurry to get away, you forgot the one piece of evidence that would send you to the chair. The locket that your father pulled off your neck when you stabbed him. Oh, no. I didn't stab him, Arthur, and I wasn't wearing the locket. You, you weren't wearing it? No. Well, then, you didn't kill him. End 
did. I thought... Oh, that... never mind what you thought. You've got to let these people go. That's quite right, Miss Gallagher. Bill! Drop that gun, Mr. Chad. We can drop it fast. Uh, yes, sir. All right, Mr. Russo. You can come in with your daughter now. There won't be any fireworks. For which I am much obliged. If there is one thing I hate about fire... It is the works. Father, please let someone else do the talking. No, Marcella, your father's the one who has to talk. He holds the key to all this. What key? I am just simple fur trapper with big heart and little brain. I don't want anything from anybody. Well, then why did you deny that you knew Mr. Gallagher? Well, why did you deny being the bearded man in that picture we found in his scrapbook? Because I am simple fur trapper. And Mr. Chadwick told me to keep my trap shut. Go on. Well, I know Gallagher for a long time. We were good friends. But when I come back from Alaska, I think him die. That is why I am, I am adopting his daughter. Mr. Gallagher's daughter? Marcella is, is Mr. Gallagher's daughter? That is right. Then who are you, Miss Gallagher? She's a very bad actress named Faye Revere. Arthur, uh, no. Well, you are, my dear. I never would have cast you for the part if you weren't the right age and general description. General description of what? The daughter Mr. Gallagher was looking for, he advertised for her in the papers, and I sent Faye to answer the advertisement. Must you tell them everything? Well, Arthur? what difference does it make, dear? The cat's out of the bag. We can't collect the inheritance now. Oh, I see. You and Miss Revere had a deal to split Mr. Gallagher's fortune. And when you found out that Marcella and her father were in town, you tried to kill them both with those phony accidents. That was Arthur's idea. He thought Mr. Gallagher was on Marcella's trail. And he was. He went to a dressing room tonight. So you killed him. Oh, don't be absurd. I have this stomach to stab a man. Besides, it's obvious now who did stab him. Who? Oh, the man or woman who had the most to gain by Mr. Gallagher's death. Marcella or Mr. Russo. You lying snake. I never tell my friend. I don't even know he is alive. And you, Marcella, is this your locket? Yes, but I wasn't wearing it. Mr. Gallagher must have taken it from my dressing room. Then why was the string broken? If Mr. Gallagher didn't rip it from your throat, the string would have been whole. Oh, but uh, the string was whole, Faye. It was? When Mr. Gallagher took it from Marcella's dressing room, it was whole. You're the one who broke the string. Are you crazy? No. You must have broken it, or you couldn't have known that it was broken. You see, uh, the locket has no string on it now, and the only time you could have seen it was when you killed him and broke the string to put the blame on Marcella. You can't prove that. Oh, I don't have to. Marcella's neck proves it. Why, of course, if that string had been ripped from her neck, it would have left a mark, and there isn't any mark. Exactly. You killed Mr. Gallagher because you were afraid he'd discover his real daughter and ruin your chance to inherit his millions. With Mr. Gallagher out of the way, you had nothing to fear. Nothing but the law, Pam. Come on, Faye, it's getting late. I did it, Jerry. I did it. What, dear? A figure eight. Now that Marcella's been giving me lessons, I can practically count up to a hundred. Oh, good for you, darling. Uh, now, watch this, dear. I'm going to try a pirouette. Ah, right? careful, Pam. That's not so easy. Oh, I can do it. Oh, I'm doing it. Say, you've come a long way since that first night we were here. Well, I've been practicing, darling. But I won't be happy until I've mastered a jump turn. How's that go? Uh, like this. Try it on the ice. Mr. and Mrs. North has come to you through the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. <laughs>